Let's go, girls. Come on. Hey guys, welcome back. So today is October 24th. It is Thursday. I'm Amy and welcome to the crazy. And because I forgot last time, we're on floss tube 31. Thought I'd throw that out there. Because we missed the 30 mark. It's fine. It's fine. Life is crazy. It's fine. So, if you remember me telling you last week, or in a stitch with me, or wherever, my wheel has gone out the window. Which means I've been more focused on certain projects. Uh oh. Speaking of projects, where is that one? My chair is loud and squeaky. She's angry. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I took her out of the bag. I have a missing project. Oh no, it's fine. It's fine. It's over there. It's fine. It's okay. <sighs> Alright, so since the last video, I worked pretty much on I Remember. I was trying to get that border complete, and I did complete it on Sunday. So I'm glad I gave myself the week, because I did not finish it that day. I'm going to go over this super fast. This is the secret stitch. This is all you'll ever see of it. I'm sorry. Not sorry. You'll see it eventually. But I started this on Monday the 21st. Is that this last Monday? Yes, yes it was. I got 86 stitches in on Monday and 253 stitches in on Tuesday. This was the projects Key and I are starting together that I cannot show you. Nosy people. No, it's because I have a nosy child. But I did get my border done. And I have to remember it goes this way. So here we are. Don't kiss nothing. It's all done. It's all done. I'm so excited. And I was going through Pattern Keeper and I was like clicking on the different numbers like because I'm a nerd. Okay, so let me rephrase. I want so bad to be organized. Like Jessie Marie is like I want to be her when I grow up. It's never going to happen, but I can try. So I actually went through and wrote down what the highest count is and in what order. So now I know for my next, because I'm color completing, first project to color complete, so I know that my next number is 939 and I have 4,628 stitches if I'm reading that correctly because it's backwards to me. So that's my next color. So I've started that one and I went through and I went all in order. And then I went through the rest of my Hades because um, Crafting Gamey Jamie was like, oh, I spent some time going through all of my other patterns and highlighting what I've already done. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that? I have Hades that I've worked on and started that I need to go through. And so that way when I want to work on them, I don't have to highlight first to catch up. I'm already caught up and I'm ready to go. So I was clicking through and seeing which one. Some of them I will still do page by page just because of the way that the colors jump. And I'm afraid I can't count. We've met, let's not lie. I can't count. So if it's not a block of like colors that are like outlining that actually like all go together, I'm afraid I'm gonna screw it all up. So I think the other one I picked out, oh, that's not a Hade. That's um, Cross Stitch Collectibles. If you remember, we talked about the bookmarks. The bookmarks I will do color completing, I think for the most part, because the way that they seem to be going, it seems to be easier to do color completion, if that makes sense at all. It's me. Nothing makes sense. It's the way I roll. It's fine. So, okay, what had happened was Zakia. I'm trying to think. Pause. Let me show you this last project real quick. And then that way I'll show you all the stitching. So, 
EJ, we'll get back to the, remind me Zakia that we were talking about Zakia and then I'll go back to the thing. Um, on Instagram, EJ called me out and was like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm working on this. So I was working over here when she did her little post and I got tagged in it. And then I was like, because at that exact moment, I was distracted and playing on my phone and not stitching like I should have been. So when she called me out, I was like, oh, how'd she know? <laughs> I'm going to go back to stitching now. So I got a lot of this done, and it was 1,036 stitches that I got done because EJ knew I wasn't stitching. <laughs> and I've been trying to do this whole, like, focus thing because remember next year, focus? And trying to like, okay, do not, I repeat, do not look at your phone for an hour. All your kids are home. Everyone's safe. There's no reason to panic. Everyone's fine. There's no emergency happening. Don't look at your phone for an hour. Just focus on one thing. Because my brain will say, oh, I want to stitch. And then I'll do two stitches and I'm like, oh, I wonder what's happening on Instagram. Oh, I got a message on Facebook. Oh, let me go do diamond painting for a minute. And then I do diamond painting for like 30 minutes and then I come back and I'm like, shoot, I didn't get any stitching done. <laughs> I'm trying to focus. I'm trying to reel it all back in. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the Zakia thing. Because that EJ called me out, reminded me. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm glad she did because I was like, oh, snap. Get back to stitching. Zakia had tagged me in semi sane stitches for Stitchopoly, I think it's called. And what happened was, as I saw it, I was like, okay, and I was reading through and I was trying to learn, okay, you got to learn how to roll the dice. You got to know where you land and you're doing your own board and all the things because I've never done anything like this before. Because if you remember, I don't, I don't do well when being told what to do. So I'm giving it a go because Akia says it's fun. Everybody else is saying it's fun. I'm giving it a go. I'm going to try to see if it'll help keep me motivated and working on different projects similar to the wheel and not just stuck on one project for the next however long I get stuck on it for and then I get bored with it and then I don't look at it again for the next three months because I stitched so much on it. Um, so signed up. Uh, they mentioned something about getting an app on your phone to roll the dice and I was like okay so I went and I did that and then I rolled the dice and I'm like yes I got a nine, so I'm going here. I need a hundred stitches. So I started. And I was super excited and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm almost done with my hundred stitches. I get to roll again. Except that it doesn't start until November 1st, y'all. It doesn't start till November 1st. I'm jumping the gun. I'm too excited. <laughs> I'm so excited that I'm joining all the things. Who am I? What's what's happening? So I've joined in for Stitcher Games, and I'm not going to discuss who I'm sponsoring or anything like that. I'm a sponsor, not a tribute. Mm -mm, I know. Um, sponsoring. And because there's like people clustering and all that stuff. I'm not, mm -mm, I'm not discussing it. Just know that I'm a sponsor. And if you happen to be in semi sane Stitches and you happen to join and you see me, then you know who I'm sponsoring. So... And I'm probably going to sponsor a few other people. I just have one person in mind that I'm... Yeah. So... Gung-ho. was like, yes, I'm almost done. I ended up putting in like 600 stitches on this. But it was kind of cool because they ended up putting um, another post for 600 something. 600 followers, 600 something, I don't remember, but it was to put in 600 stitches on a project, and I just happened to be do working on that anyway, so I literally think I have like, pause, I can tell you, I had 534 stitches in before I realized that it's not November 1st, so if I can finish up this to the 600 mark, and then take another picture and then send it for that challenge because they gave you two weeks to do it from the time of the post. So that it's easy enough. I can get that done. Um, so yeah, I've joined in. 
Hold on. Now I have to think. I joined in the Stitcher games. I'm joining in the Stitchopoly. And I'm joining in the Magical Stitches in Literature next year for the Disney Villains theme. I'm not quite sure what happened, but Zakia said it was a good idea. Typically, if Zakia tells me to do it, I do it. So, you know, it's fine. I'm not going to freak out about it because I've already, I'm already like panic mode and oh my gosh, what if I can't do it? And I'm like freaking myself out. I'm going to show you my Packers project again. I got like 10 stitches in. I was way too distracted. I don't even know where they are. They're somewhere in here. I'm assuming with this thread. I mean, that would just make sense. I don't know where that goes, but we're just going to stick it there and act like that's where it belongs. It looks a lot better today. My lighting is better. It's not as gloomy as it was last week. So, I need to get this done because that's a Christmas project. So, I have to try to find... My game plan is with the Stitchopoly and... I already done forgot. The Stitcher games. I'm going to try to find as many challenges as I can to fit this certain project into it to force me to stitch on it. I don't know how well it's going to go. I don't know what we're looking for. This is my first everything. So we're going to see how it goes. But this is the one that I've been really stuck on. Because I got the border on. I'm all excited to color complete. And oh my gosh, Pattern Keeper is freaking amazing. It's freaking amazing. The secret stitch that I can't show you. The technology dragon that I got called out on that I was like, whoop. And I got, I'm so excited, like I said, so excited that EJ called me out because I got an extra thousand stitches in and I'm still finishing that pinkish salmon color. I want to finish that color before I stop on that and move on to the next project. So I will be working on that today. Um, let's see. Is my light pad over here? It is because I found it. Please don't hit the wire. Be nice. So let's show you. Let's go eh, eh, this way. Linda, will you be able to focus on the design? Is it too difficult? Let me, let me back up and go in slow. This is Material Ghoul. And I love it. And I'm super excited to be wearing it because I've got to admit, I've gotten a lot of compliments. I've handed quite a few samples out this week, which is amazing. I've gotten some new orders in this week. I am so stoked. Okay. So stoked. Hopefully we'll get some gift boxes rolling soon because it's the end of the month. So I got to start prepping for those. Um, that's pretty much it for my stitching. It gets boring when I don't have the wheel. I know. I know. That's why I'm doing the challenges because I'm hoping that it's going to give me like incentive and motivation to stitch, but still stitch on different projects. So that way weekly I can be like, oh look, I had seven days of homework and this is what I had. This is what I did. So we'll see how that works. Hopefully, I'm thinking positive. Hopefully that'll work for me. Um, let's get to life stuff because life stuff is, there's not a lot, but there's a lot. Does that make sense? So the kids are all fine. We're all fine. The whole house is good. We're fine. Allergies are a killer though. We're communicating by sneezes. I'm just saying. Um, except for my son because he's on Claritin. Although I said that and then he sneezed like five times in a row. So we're communicating by sneezes for the most part. Um, but otherwise, we're all, I mean, we're all doing okay. We're all good. So, a few years ago, when we moved out to this side of Arizona, I was trying to find doctors because something with me is changing and going on. Um, I've always been very open and honest about my, my depression and my anxiety. So, but it's something else. It's something different. It's not, um... I mean, my depression and my anxiety are typical battles that I fight every single day and for very different reasons. So something else is just, my brain is telling me that, hey, something's off. So three years ago I went in and I got some blood work done and they pretty much scared the crap out of me and gave me no answers. So I got 
one doctor who told me that my thyroid was overactive, which if you see all this, you know that's false. Um, another doctor who told me that my thyroid was underactive, a little more believable. Another doctor that told me that my thyroid is perfectly fine, but my blood platelets are too high. And something else was off. Oh, my vitamin B. I don't have any, apparently. There's like no vitamin B in my system at all. So he sent me to a specialist. Didn't exactly tell me what specialist. Just said, hey, I'm going to send you to a specialist. And she specializes in platelet counts and all of that stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. So go down there. And I walk in the door and go to sit down in the little room. And she walks in. And her reaction was, oh, you're awfully young. I went, oh, so are you? I don't, I don't know how to react to that. Because <laughs> she looked to be about my age, maybe a little bit younger. And she walks in and she goes, well, sorry, typically I don't see people for, for what we're talking about unless you're over 55 or have leukemia. Do what now? What are we talking about? <laughs> She's like, I'm a leukemia specialist. So I'm being diagnosed with leukemia? Like, what's happening? She's like, oh, I don't, I'm not sure. Let's just go ahead and run some blood work and we'll go from there. Like, okay. So I left her office. Again, no answers. Now I'm being told that I have a high platelet count, which can cause strokes. Or it's a sign of leukemia because I'm not over 55. Or it can cause bone marrow cancer and I can just be walking randomly and my leg will snap in half because I have no bone marrow left because I have no vitamin B in my system I walked out of there extremely panicked I, I went in they did my blood work they took seven vials of blood from me I left and I'm like how long is this gonna take for me to find out oh it takes about two to three weeks I'm like oh that's nice See all this gray hair, y'all? This is where this is all coming from. This isn't all just kids. This is doctors, too. So I leave. I come home, have a major meltdown. Tell my husband, I don't, I don't know if I'm dying. I could totally be dying right now. And I have no idea. We wait the three weeks. They call me up and they're like, you're fine. We don't know what the problem is. So now what? Well, you're done with our office because we specialize in curing leukemia. Great. I go back to the other doctor. I don't have leukemia. What's going on? I don't know. We're done here. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to come back. We're, I'm done. Fast forward to now, um, before my mother passed away, I was looking for a primary care physician for her because she was diabetic, heart problems, the whole nine. And... We were going to the same place that I was going to, but my mom was getting better results. Like the doctor came in, knew exactly what was going on. It was basically just a continuation of checkup from the previous doctors that she had had before. So it was basically just maintenance for her. They weren't looking for any answers. Whereas for me, I was looking for answers. So it got to the point where my mom was like, well, if you don't trust them, I don't trust them. I don't, I don't wanna go to them anymore. And I was like, okay, I need to find someone else then. So I found another doctor and we went in and we had to do a patient doc introduction thing or whatever and my mom went in and was like, I love him, he's so nice and he actually cares and I'm like, okay, great, we will stick with him. We went and saw him a few times with my mom before she passed away and he was always really good with her. He was always, you know, how are you? How are you feeling? You know, has there been any changes? Is there anything I need to be concerned about? What's going on? And every time my mom had a complaint, he did his damnedest to help fix it. So I was like, you know what? Let me just ask. Do you do pediatrics and do you do, you know, like a family unit? And he's like, oh yeah, absolutely. I can do that. Perfect. So I brought all three of my kids into him. And he made sure, you know, to ask them questions about like, 
when you run a lot, does this happen? Or, you know, when you are concentrating really hard, do you get distracted? Like he's, he's checking for anything that could be going on, even though there's nothing wrong. Do you know what I mean? So like, um, he checks on like their mental health. And well, how are you doing in school? What's your favorite subject? What are you into? Do you have a class that you're having problems in? So he's he tries to get really involved. And that to me was like, I think you're the doc. I think you're the doc that I'm going to bring all my problems to. And I think you're going to be the one to get me answers. So I went and I saw him on Monday. And I took the major chunk that I'm concerned about right now. And we're focusing on that, which is the whole thyroid thing. Do I have a thyroid issue or do I not have a thyroid issue? Do I need to be concerned? Am I supposed to be taking medicine? What do I need to do? So he's like, you know, we'll get some blood work done. We're going to find out where your vitamin B levels are. We're going to find out where your thyroid levels are at. We're going to find out where your blood platelets are because it's not dangerous if they're like a little elevated. But if they're super high, then yes, we need to be concerned. Okay. According to the other doctor, they were so high off the charts, they sent me to a leukemia specialist. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to read this stuff. I'm not a doc. So he's also sending me, so I went and I did the blood work on Tuesday morning because I had already drank a cup of coffee, so I wasn't technically fasting. So went in on Tuesday, got the blood work done, and they're scheduling me. So tonight at five, I'm going in for an ultrasound on my head and neck. The only reason why my face looks really concerned about this is because I've only had two ultrasounds in my life. That's not true. Two types of ultrasounds, I should say. One for my gallbladder and one for my babies. And every time they did those ultrasounds, there was that really cold gel and then the thing that they rub over your belly or over your, your stomach area where the gallbladder is at and they, you know, look around and see what's going on. And my imagination tells me that I'm going to walk out with gel blobs all over my face because I don't know how you would do an ultrasound of my head and neck. Unless it's not the same way you do a baby. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about this stuff. So that's where my head's at right now. So I'm not necessarily, I'm trying not to allow my brain to do its overactive thinking thing where I go into panic mode and no one's ever going to find an answer for me because I've been fighting for answers for seven years seven years, lots of different doctors. Everyone keeps telling me I'm fine when I know there's something, there's something going on. I had one doctor try to tell me I had fibromyalgia. I had another doctor tell me that I was a pill popper looking for pills because fibromyalgia is a non-existent disease. If you want to know if your doctor's a legit doctor, send me to them because I can seem to bring out the worst in them. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I just, I have the worst luck the worst luck. I've had a dentist accuse me of being a meth addict. I about flew out of my chair and over the desk for that one. Jason pulled me out very kindly. I don't know why. And I go in peaches and cream. I promise. I'm on my best behavior until they say something like that and then I lose my... I lose it. <laughs> so, hopefully we'll get some answers and find out what's going on. Because one, I'm way too overweight. Two, I'm tired all the time. That's been my biggest problem these last two weeks is that I'm sitting here at my desk, I'm stitching, I'm going along, and next thing I know, I'm waking up. And I've been asleep for the last hour and a half. That's not good. And then at night, I can't get my brain to shut down in order to go to sleep to get up early to take the kids to school. It's a vicious circle that just keeps going and going and going. So... Right now he is putting me on an antidepressant. I forgot what it's called. I've never had it before. But it's an antidepressant with a medication that's supposed to help you sleep. So I haven't started it yet because I'm terrified. Because medications for me, for some reason, are always over the top. So way back when, when my doctor would uh, prescribe... Um, the main one used for anxiety and I can't think of what it's called right now because I haven't taken it in years not Zoloft that's for depression I've done that one too but I can't remember it's not the point the point is is that he gave me 0.5 of the medication and I took 0.5 of the medication mind you I'm supposed to take this once a day 
and it knocked me out for like 24 hours. I was groggy. I was lethargic. I couldn't think straight. I called him up and was like, no, this is not going to work. I got babies. I can't. So he's like, oh, just cut it in half. I'm like, okay. I cut it in half. Same exact reaction. I'm like, nope, I can't do this. I, I can't. I sleep. Like it knocks me out so bad that I'm, I'm gone for 16 to 24 hours. Cannot wake up. Cannot move. Type sleep. So this new pill... I'm a little concerned and so I'm gonna wait until tomorrow because then it'll be the weekend and I'll take it at a specific time because I plan to take it at a specific time every single night and he said that it should probably knock me on my butt for the first you know so many days and then my body should start adjusting to it and getting used to it and I should be okay so I figure if I start on the weekend that gives me a two to three day jump start of the you know, week or two weeks that it should take to finally start kicking in and relaxing to where we're, I don't think we're going anywhere this weekend. I think we have a calm weekend this weekend. And so I can just, if it knocks me out for 24 hours and it knocks me out for 24 hours and it's going to do its job, but I can't, I can't take that every night if it's going to keep me just sleeping, That's not going to work. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes, but that's life. So I talked a little bit about doctors and all that stuff on in my Stitch With Me. Sorry if I bored y'all, but that's what's been on my mind lately, because that's what I'm dealing with. More doctors, no answers. I just want to know, do I have any vitamin B in my system? Do I need to be worried about bro bones snapping because I breathed too hard? Do I need to be worried about a stroke because my blood's too thick? Is that the reason why my body's fattening up? Like, what's happening? And why am I falling asleep all the time? I can clock it. That's the craziest part. I can clock it. Between 10.30 and 11 o'clock, I'm out. I'm tired, exhausted. My body feels like I'm carrying 5,000 pounds and I just feel so weighted that I cannot move until I sleep. And then right about 5, 5, 5.30 in the afternoon, just before we start cooking dinner, same thing. My body feels like there's a ton of weight. I get extremely cold and I... I, it's like hibernation mode. I fall asleep. And then I get that feeling again between like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. I typically, I force myself to go lay down at midnight. And I try to read because that typically helps me to fall asleep. But it's usually about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning when that weight feeling hits me again. And then I can finally crash. So, I don't know what's going on. It's not normal. I don't like it. So... Hopefully this doc will help me fix it. Um, plans for this week? I don't really have any. I'm going to keep going with the secret, the secret stitch. I'm going to keep going with the, I remember. Color completion. Oh, jeez, I lost my words. And then I got to get going on the football project. I keep, I look at it and then I forget. It's just that quick. I looked right at it and skipped over it. Went straight to technology meltdown. <laughs> it's okay though. I'll get it done. I have to get it done. I don't have a choice. I do, but I don't. Um, so that's pretty much the four projects that I'm focusing on. And then November 1st is when things are going to really start to change. I think because I'm going to have the Stitcher games and I'm going to have Stitchopoly. So I'm going to have both. A part of me thinks that I'm going to challenge myself not to double dip. I think I'll use double dipping for emergencies. We'll see what happens. Wish me luck. Cannot believe I'm joining all the groups. Who am I? Going to the doctors. I'm trying to get healthy again because typically I usually don't care. But I, you know, I lost my biological father at 54, which is... I didn't, I didn't really know him. I knew him as an infant and a toddler, and then he disappeared out of my life. Um, I didn't know he was my dad, though. I just found that out last year. Last year? Two years? Has it been two years? I think this Christmas it'll be two years that I found out that my Uncle Mike was actually my biological father. That's a story for another time. I'll share that with the honest stitch with me. Um, and then, so he passed away at 54, and my mom passed away at 65. They were both still really young, in my opinion. So, it's time to get me back into health while I still have the chance. Because I don't want their problems. <laughs> they both had major, major heart problems. So, my ticker 
needs to be focused on. So yeah, 2020, focus. Not just focusing on like stitchy stuff, but it's time for me to focus on me because I'm really bad at that. All right, on that note, I will bid you adieu. Stay random, don't kiss your projects, and I'll see you guys next time.